All right, here we go. Practice exam four. Let's get this thing started. So problem one is going to ask us to solve the triangle ABC given that we know all three side lengths of the triangle. So we know all three sides. That means it's going to be a law of cosines problem. Uh, since that's one of the two triangles that we need to use a lot of cosines for. Uh, that being either if it's a side, side, side triangle or a side angle side, those are the two where we need law of cosines. All of the others we use a lot of sines for. Uh, so if we try to set up a law of cosines example, uh, what is that? We have C squared equals a squared plus b squared, which looks just like the Pythagorean theorem, minus 2ab cosine of angle c, which is the part that makes it law of cosines. We bring in that cosine part. Uh, and if we turn around and solve this thing for angle c, uh, we should hopefully get that the cosine of angle C is equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared. So I'll need to move that C squared over to the other side. And then all of that is divided by 2AB. 2AB. So those are our side lengths. Okay, so this is going to end up being a calculator problem. Next, we'll say that our angle C is equal to the arc cosine or the inverse cosine of whatever we get when we plug all that stuff in. A is 3.1. Uh, B is 5.2. C is 7.3, all of that divided by 2 times 3.1 times 5.2. And we'll plug that all into a calculator and see what we get. Uh, so one thing I hadn't yet discussed, uh, I just kind of started solving. I decided to solve for angle C first. Uh, in a side, side, side triangle like this one, where I know all three sides, I sort of get my option of solving for whatever triangle I'd like to, whatever angle I'd like to solve for first. Uh, and I always solve for the biggest angle first when given the option. Uh, the reason for that uh, is that uh, if I wanted to use the law of sines to find the next angle, uh, I could run into an issue where I get the wrong angle from law of sines, uh, since sine inverse is defined in the first and the fourth quadrants. Uh, but if I solve for the biggest angle first using the law of cosines, where cosine is, or inverse cosine is defined in the first and second quadrants, I know I'm always going to get the right angle to come out. Uh, but so again, anytime I'm given the option, of which angle to solve for first, always solve for the biggest angle first with the law of cosines. Biggest angle always being opposite the biggest side, C is the biggest side, so I went for angle C first. Okay, enough on that. If you throw all that into a calculator, which is really what I was stalling for, uh, you get 121.1 degrees. So angle C, 121.1 degrees. If we want to solve this thing for angle B instead, uh, we can use pretty much that same thing that we just plugged into our calculator. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it. Uh, where we'll just need to make a couple of quick changes. Uh, we're solving for B now. 
uh, which means that b squared should be the negative term instead of c squared. Once I subtract that b squared over to the other side. Uh, and in the denominator, instead of 2ab, I'd want 2ac. So 7.3 goes right there instead. And again, this is just taking our law of cosines equation, uh, but solving it for B instead of for C. Uh, but if we throw that into a calculator, we should hopefully get 37.6 degrees. So angle B, 37.6 degrees. Uh, and then we'll want to go get angle A. Uh, but if we're just solving for our last angle, we can use the fact that all three have to add up to 180 degrees uh, in order to get it. Yeah, I know. Participants sharing the screen. Uh, so A is equal to 180 degrees minus 121.1 degrees minus. 37.6 degrees. Uh, and we get some result here. Uh, I think I get 21.3 degrees. And with that, we've now solved triangle ABC. Uh, since we just needed to get the three pieces of information that we were missing, we knew all three sides, we just needed to solve for all three angles. Uh, one quick note here, uh, I chose to solve for angle B using the law of cosines a second time, uh, but once I knew my first angle, I could have switched over to use the law of sines instead. Uh, so if you prefer using law of signs because it's a, a quicker or easier formula, feel free to do that on the second angle. Um, I just did law of cosines because I already had the work in my calculator. So it's easy to just go change a couple things. Get to that correct answer. All right, uh, next up though, we want the area of this here triangle. Uh, and we're gonna use the formula that says area is equal to S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. Uh, where S is the semi-perimeter, uh, meaning it's just half the perimeter of this particular triangle. Uh, so S in this case should be equal to uh, some of a few things added up. Uh, this is 3.1 plus 5.2 plus, ah, uh, crap, 7.3, all of that divided by two, throw it into a calculator and you should hopefully get 7.8. Red. Blue, green. Uh, so if we then plug all that into the formula, A is going to be equal to the square root of 7.8 times three other things. I want S minus A, which comes out to 4.7, 7.8 minus 3.1. Uh, then I need 7.8 minus 5.2. And then I need 7.8 minus 7.3, which is 
0 0.5 uh, and throw that into a calculator to hopefully get uh, 6.90. Square feet. Keep things looking a little more organized. Yeah. Can stop and shit. Or, hmm. Maybe I'll organize it this way. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I've got some space to center that thing in the box. All right, cool. Not that any of that was super important, but I think it looks a little nicer. All right, cool. So that's our, that's our area formula. Uh, we could have also used in one of the formulas from the law of signs worksheet. That's like the one half AB sine Z, since we did solve for all three angles. So you could do that too. Uh, I just chose to work with the one that only used the given information. That way, if a mistake was made in part A, it would not impact part B. Uh, but yeah, not, uh, not a super critical thing. All right. So let's solve the next one. Uh, so we know we're again solving for a triangle. We know side A, we know angle A, and we know side C. Uh, so this is an angle side side triangle. Uh, we know that because we're given two sides and one of the letters repeats itself meaning that it's angle side side. If we're given two sides, but three different letters, so one each of A, B, and C, that'll be a side angle side, uh, since we've got some separation in there. Uh, but in this case, uh, we've got the angle side side, or side side angle, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, so this is the type that could potentially have two different triangles. So let's take a look at that. Uh, the piece that I don't yet know uh, is uh, angle C. So if I start by setting up sine of C divided by side C, which we know is 12.8, and that's equal to sine of 58 over 11.4. Right, sine of A over A. Uh, and we can solve this thing for C, which hopefully get that sine of C uh, is equal to 12.8 over 11.4 times the sine of 58 degrees. Mm. Perhaps it makes that just a little bit smaller. Uh, and let's get an estimate for what this thing is. Uh, so let me go punch that in a calculator real quick. 12.8 over 11.4. Sine of nope, fifty eight degrees, uh, zero point nine five two two. So angle C is or sine of angle C, uh, is just just a little bit less than one. Uh, so we know we've got an angle that's pretty close to 90 degrees, but isn't quite 90 degrees. 
Uh, and so since we have sine of C is equal to that number, uh, then we could find two different angles, one of those being in the first quadrant, the other being in the second quadrant of the law. But sine inverse will only give us the answer that's in the first quadrant. Uh, so we might need to do, a, or in fact, we will need to do a little bit of work to figure out what that missing angle should be. Uh, and if I bring in a picture here, hopefully explain what's going on. Uh, here's what our triangle could look like. Ooh, and I think I got my colors backwards. So let me just go fix that real quick. I'm doing A in red and B in blue. All right, cool, there we go. Uh, so the pieces that are given to us are angle A, side A, uh, and side C. So if we just ignore angle B for now, or you know what? them bring it back in a second so here's everything that's given to us what if i just kind of delete a couple of the pieces uh so everything given is we know we know that 12.8 that dark the the dark line the black line that i drew in uh that's labeled 12.8 i know that distance and i know angle a which is the red angle 58 degrees that got drawn in since I know that side A is always opposite angle A, I know that one of those, whatever line that's across from angle A must be 11.4 meters long. But since I don't know the angle that's up at the top of the triangle, that being specifically angle B, which I'll bring in right now, I don't know what the measure of angle B is. I don't know if that line should move to the left or to the right, because both of those uh, would be an 11.4 meter length uh, that's opposite angle A while keeping A at 58 degrees. Uh, so uh, if I'm looking for angle C, which is the thing that we're after first, I end up getting two different options for C. Notice that C is in that that lower right corner of both of these triangles. Uh, C1, which is the one I get out here, uh, that'll be the result that I get from just taking the inverse sine of 0 0.9522. Uh, and looking to the other side, C2, this is the angle I would get uh, if I find if I use C1 as a reference angle and find an answer in the second quadrant. And either one of those two angles could solve this triangle out. Uh, so it's because of those reasons that we could potentially end up with, or be that we do in fact end up with two separate triangles. Uh, so we just have to figure out everything that corresponds to the first triangle, and then everything that corresponds to the second triangle. So if we look up here, I'd have an angle B1 and an angle B2. That guy is B1, that guy is B2. B2, there we go. So all that's left is to go finish solving for all that stuff. Uh, so if I bring it back over to the work side of this, uh, we're after angle C1 first. 
which is equal to the inverse sine of 12.8 over 11.4 sine of 58 degrees. And if we throw that into a calculator, we get 72.2 degrees. kind of extend that line over there so that we can also look at finding angle C2, which is our other option. It is the supplement to angle C1. So I want 180 degrees minus C1, uh, which we know what that should be. 180 minus 72.2, that's 107.8. So that's our branching path right there. So that in the one case, we have a small angle C. In the other case, we have a large angle C. And then we'll have to use that angle to continue solving the rest of the problem, specifically solving for everything about B. Uh, so B1 would be next. It should be 180 degrees minus the given angle, which is 58 degrees minus C1 that we solved for, 72.2 degrees. Throw it into a calculator and hopefully you get 49.8. Uh, and then we'll use that to solve for our missing side B1. Uh, so B1 over the sine of 48 degrees. Uh, is equal to 11.4 over the sine of 58. I uh, will come back to A over sine A. That's where that's coming from. Uh, so all that's left to do then, solve for angle B or side B1. Uh, and it is 11.4 times the sine of 48 degrees. Ooh, whoops, the daisies. 48's not right. 49.8 degrees, there we go. 49.8 degrees uh, divided by the sine of 58 degrees. Uh, and we'll get a number there, 11.3. Nope, 10.3. So that's our first triangle, everything with a subscript one. Now we just need to solve for the other two options for angle B and side B that correspond to angle C2. Uh, so, the work is going to look pretty similar. Side B or angle B2 is 180 degrees minus the given angle of 58 minus C2, 107.8 degrees. Uh, and that works out to... 14.2 degrees. And then to get side B2, I'm going to take this idea right here. and drop it in up here. Uh, so this is 11.4 
times the sine of 14.2 degrees uh, divided by the sine of 58 degrees. And then we'll see what we get when we plug that in. I got 3.3 meters. All right. So if we back this thing out a little bit, try and put as much work on the screen as we can, and start looking at some similarities. Uh, hopefully the, the work matches kind of a parallel between solving these two, these two triangles. Uh, so that solving for angle B, is just 180 minus 58 minus angle C, but angle C changes from the first triangle to the second triangle. So we just have to plug in a different number there. Uh, and then solving for side B1, it's 11.4 times the sine of angle B over sine of 58 degrees, uh, but angle B changes from triangle to triangle. So we'll just need to make sure that we plug in the correct angle to get that missing side. So that is probably the hardest question uh, that we can ask on this exam. The one where, hey, you know, here's a triangle, you have to solve for two of them. And hopefully by comparison, everything else is relatively easy. Well, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves because we have a word problem. So what do we got here? Uh, Coast Guard Station Brave is 47 kilometers due north of Coast Guard Station Courage. And then an airplane is forced to make an emergency landing and it's sighted by the two Coast Guard stations. So notice that we have Brave, Courage, and an airplane. So we have an easily labelable A, B, and C. I guess B, C, and A based on the way I said it. Uh, we know the bearing of the airplane from Coast Guard Station Brave. It's 57.4 degrees west of north. And from Courage, it's 32.1 degrees west of north. I include a fully labeled illustration showing all the bearings given, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So let's put down a diagram. So we'll have this line going north and south. Uh, we know that Brave is due north of Courage. B is always in blue though. Brave is here. Courage will be down there. Courage will be down there. And then we're told that, uh, what, Brave is 47 kilometers due north. So this distance right there is 47 kilometers from C to B. Uh, then we know that if we want to get up to the downed airplane, we need to go 32 degrees west of north for starting from Courage. So crank this back 32 degrees. And oh boy, what do we get? Thirty degrees back would be like a sixty degree angle. If we try to go to a fifty seven, it'll be like thirty degrees. Yeah, we'll be able to do it. Okay. So right about this, that's 32 degrees, so we'll knock it two more degrees this way. Cool, and we'll draw a line of sight uh, from this particular spot. Hmm. Let's just... We'll draw the whole thing out just to make sure that we've got enough distance on there. 
Uh, so we know that if we move along that line from station C, we'll get to the airplane. Uh, from Brave, it's a 57.4 degree angle. So if we crank that down, it's just above 30. Do the same thing, draw our line of sight. Okay, and that means that the intersection of those two lines is going to be where our airplane went down. A for airplane. So that's everything that we're given. Uh, just missing a couple of labels. We should put the bearing from courage to the airplane. We know it's 13 or 32.1 degrees west of north. So 32.1 degrees is going to be that angle right there. Uh, and going from brave to the airplane, which should be, notice it's this angle up here because it's west of north. So I'm going to measure it west of that due north line. This guy is 57.4 degrees. All right, so that is all of the given information labeled on this triangle. We have our two bearings on there. We have the distance on there. Uh, and we need to figure out what exactly. We want to figure out how far the airplane is from courage. So from, and from point C up to point A is what we're after. So if we put it all together, we're missing a couple of key elements. We don't yet know angle B. So we should start by figuring out what that's equal to. Uh, and notice that angle B, which is going to be this angle right here on the interior of the triangle, uh, it's supplemental to the bearing angle that was given. So if we want angle B, we're looking for 180 degrees minus 57.4 degrees. Throw it into a calculator and we get 122.6 degrees. Uh, up next, in order to complete our triangle, we're going to need to get angle A, which will be that one up there. Uh, and A should just be 180 degrees minus the other two angles in the triangle. So minus 32.1 degrees minus 122.6 degrees. Uh, so notice that the bearing angle at C also happens to be the angle that's on the inside of the triangle, which helps us out a little bit. Uh, but throw all of that into a calculator, and I got 25.3 degrees. All right, now that we have all of our length, Able, all of our angles figured out, uh, we need to figure out the thing it is that we're actually solving for. Uh, we're after the distance from A, the distance between A, point A and point C, which means we're solving for side B, right? Because that's the side that is opposite angle B. It's the side that connects points A and point C. Uh, so, we can probably set up a law of sines equation here. Or we should be able to say that B divided by sine of B, which is 122.6, uh, is equal to the only side that we know, 47, 
divided by the angle that's opposite that 47 distance, which was angle A, so 25.3 degrees. All right, so since we only know one side, we're gonna have to use that side in the law of sines to find angle or side B, uh, and that happens to be side A that we were given. Uh, so set that thing up, plug it into a calculator. We get 47 times the sine, blah, let's try that again. The sine of 122.6 degrees over sine of 25.3 degrees. That's our blue angle. That's our red angle. Throw it all into a calculator and I got 92.7 kilometers. Side B, put it in blue, D for blue. Hey, and that's a word problem done. Hmm, looks like I might wanna kick in gear. All those questions are all the long ones. So the rest go relatively quick. Uh, so next on the list, finding the area of triangle ABC as given. Uh, so notice that there is enough information in here to use one of those area formulas. Specifically, one of those is area is equal to one half C A sine B. So green, red, blue, right? One piece from each of our, one piece from each of our different, each of our different letters. So this is one half of four times 12 times the sine of, well, sine of 81 degrees. And it's equal to something. Let's just inch that a little bit closer. Green, red, blue. Plug it all into a calculator and you should hopefully get 23.7. And this is in square centimeters. Green, we have a red, we have Uh, make sure you're in decimal mode in your calculator if you're using a graphing calculator to solve this one. All right, and up next, what is it we're after? The sine of three pi over eight. Uh, so does it give us a hint here? Nope, it just says show all work. Okay. Uh, but even without a hint, uh, anytime we're going to look for a something pi over eight, sine, cosine, tangent of something pi over eight, we're going to want to use a half angle formula. Since pi over eight, oops, pi over eight is half of pi over four meaning that three pi over eight is half of three pi over four. Mark those couple of pieces. Three pi over four. Uh, so 
we'll want to set up our half angle formula for sine, which is plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine three pi over four, all of that over two. And we'll start talking about the pieces that we're interested in. Uh, so let's notice over here, on the inside, we're using three pi over four because that's the half angle part. Uh, and three pi over four is in the second quadrant. Uh, but actually, maybe let's label that down here. Second quadrant for three pi over four, but three pi over eight is slightly less than pi over two. It's three eighths is slightly less than a half. So three pi over eight, our initial angle is in quadrant one, uh, but three pi over four, the thing that we're gonna do math with, that's in quadrant two. So because we're in quadrant one, we're going to wanna take the positive square root option. Uh, but, on our fraction, we're gonna have one minus negative root two over two, all over two. <laughs> cool. So again, uh, cosine is negative in the second quadrant, so it's negative root two over two on the inside, but sine is positive in the first quadrant, so it's positive on the outside. Uh, from here, we just need to simplify this thing a little bit going to multiply by 2 over 2 on the inside to get rid of our extra denominator. Uh, and this thing looks like the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. Uh, and then that thing can simplify a little bit uh, to be the square root of two plus the square root of two, make that a little bit bigger, square root of two plus the square root of two all over two. And that's our answer root two plus root two all over two. I'll just put that for just a second. All right, problem six. Uh, cosine of two theta is equal to cosine of theta minus one. So we're gonna need to use a double angle identity for cosine. Uh, and since we already have cosine in the problem, I'm going to use the one that says cosine of two theta is equal to two cosine squared of theta minus one. Uh, and that's equal to cosine theta minus one on the other side. Uh, if we then, try to solve this thing. I've got two cosine squared theta minus cosine theta after I bring that over. Minus one plus one is equal to zero. Shift this a little bit back over to the left, keep our equal signs in line. I can factor a cosine theta out of this.
which will give us two options. One is, um, <laughs> two cosine, yeah, two cosine theta minus one equals zero, which means cosine theta equals one half. Our other option is to just simply have cosine theta equals zero. Let's put an or up there because right, it's one or the other. They both give us solutions. Uh, and what are those solutions? Uh, we've got pi over three, five pi over three, uh, pi over two, and three pi over two. Uh, so that last bit is just going back to the unit circle. Cosine theta is one half and it's positive. That means we're looking in the first and the fourth quadrants. So pi over three and five pi over three. Uh, and if cosine of theta is zero, that happens at the top and the bottom. So pi over two and three pi over two. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at problem seven. Uh, tangent is equal to negative root 39 over five. Tangent of u specifically is equal to root 39 over five. And u, angle u is in between pi over two and pi. And we wanna find the exact value of cosine u over two. Well, let's start by just taking a look at our reference triangle. So we know that angle U is in quadrant two. It's in between pi over two and two. So if we take that thing to a reference triangle, should hopefully get something like that, where U is going to be that angle measured in standard position. Uh, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So root 39 is our opposite side. 5 is our adjacent side. Uh, and we're in the second quadrant. So we've got to put the negative sign somewhere. Or rather, we have to put the negative sign somewhere. Because we're in the second quadrant, it belongs on the five. Uh, and then what else do we need? Uh, Pythagorean theorem should give us that our hypotenuse is eight. So we'll have eight squared is equal to five squared plus, well, let's call it root 39 squared. 25 and 39 is 64. Square root of 64 is eight. Okay, so uh, all of that to get us set up to find the cosine of u over two, which we go to our formula, cosine of u over two should be equal to one plus, oh no, Try that one more time. The square root of the square root of mm. the square root of one plus cosine of u all over two. So if I want to find the cosine of u over two. 
that means I'm going to need to figure out which quadrant u over 2 is located in, not just angle u. So if we come back up to our initial inequality for u and multiply it by 1 half, I should get that u over 2 is in between pi over 2 on the right yeah. and pi over 4 on the left. I might multiply each of those pieces by 1 half, pi over 4, and get a little bit closer there, uh, which is in quadrant 1. And in quadrant one, cosine is positive. So we're going to end up wanting to take the positive square root uh, in this set. So we're after one plus cosine of u over two is going to be negative five over eight. all over 2, and then solve that thing, or simplify that thing as much as we can. Uh, so I'm going to multiply this thing by 8 over 8 to get rid of the extra denominator. Uh, and that means we're looking at the square root of 8 minus 5. over 16, uh, which simplifies to the square root of 3 over 4. Eight minus five is three, and square root of 16 is four. Let's actually regroup some of this stuff. There we go. There we are. Uh, moving right along. Ooh, we are, uh, cool. yeah, moving along. I think this one might be our last problem. Yep, it is. So we want to find the exact value of the tangent, the sine inverse of negative 11 over 61 minus pi over 4. Uh, so keep in mind uh, the sine inverse. Uh, of a number is just an angle, which we'll call alpha, meaning that this thing is equal to the tangent of alpha minus pi over 4. Uh, which we know an identity for. This is the tangent of alpha. Tangent of alpha, alpha, sure, good enough. Uh, minus tangent of pi over four, all of that over uh, one plus tangent alpha, one plus 
tangent alpha times tangent of pi over four. And if we start plugging a few things in, we're gonna have tangent of alpha, which we don't know yet, minus one, because tangent of pi over four is one, divided by one plus tangent of alpha times one. All right, so before we even solve anything, we can already have most of this thing all set up. So all we gotta do now is figure out what tangent of alpha is and plug it in. So we'll probably need a reference triangle over here. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, keep in mind uh, that because we're taking the sine inverse of a negative number, we should have a reference triangle in the fourth quadrant. Uh, where, what do we know? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite should be negative 11, hypotenuse will be 61. The Pythagorean theorem gives us that our adjacent side is 60. Once again, we'll have 60 squared, oh, let's try one more time. 61 squared is equal to 11 squared plus 60 squared. Uh, so if our opposite side is 60 and we need tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, I think I said that wrong a moment ago, our adjacent side is 60, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so this should be negative 11 over 60. Oh my, I must have left empty shape on. Yep. Negative 11 over 60, negative 11 over 60. Uh, and I want to simplify this mess a little bit. I'm going to multiply by 60 over 60 to get rid of my extra denominator within a denominator. Doing that, hmm, I need to give myself just a little bit more space here. Let's just kind of slide this whole thing over a little bit. Uh, so it is equal to negative 11 minus 60. Divided by, this looks like it'll be 60 minus 11. If we simplify those fractions, let's just drop it down just a little bit more. Because uh, then I can combine that stuff together. This is negative 71 divided by 49. 